Hey, what's going on? It's been a while since I did it this way, but it'll be a while since uh, before I put it up. It might go up today, which is on Sunday, but I had a little mishap. Right now, I'm on Long Island. I'll tell you, man, I didn't realize how lucky we were to have, well, I think we have five micro centers in the area. Which gives us, if you're clever, and determined to pay only but so much like I am for certain things, you will keep hunting until you find that bargain. And quiet as this cat, the store that seems to have the best bargains is not New Jersey. New Jersey is best for the savings on the taxes. Because they have very low taxes. I think it's like 2%, 3% or something like that. And they used to have good deals on stuff, but uh, open box stuff, that is. And I I remember somebody called that hand-me-downs. But I tell you what, when it comes to computer stuff, you're supposed to be a computer guy, too. You know, guy did well, hand-me-downs. I'm on Long Island right now. See somebody doing something. Oh, okay. Just checking to see if somebody was there so they can get in the store. Because I'm here early. Because I spotted a bargain. I'm going to get into the main topic, which is Majaro and, and some other spooky shit, ancestors, and all that crazy shit that uh, you know who keeps coming up with. <laughs> Hell, I can say it. Tariq Nashi. I ain't the one getting sued. <laughs> and even if I was, I still say it. I'm gonna let no fucking judge tell me what to say and what I can't say. There ain't no goddamn harassment talking about somebody. The fuck kind of shit is that where you can't talk about somebody? You could talk shit about the fucking president, senator. Now, if you're in a fucking country where there's a monarchy, they, you know, they may ban you from doing that or a dictator, which is like a, it's the same thing as, as a monarchy, fucking dictator. But see, they don't like calling uh, monarchies dictators because that would indict a lot of Europeans. <laughs> and of course, the uh, Saudi so-called friends, as long as they got oil. Once that oil runs out, they ain't going to be friends anymore. So I'm killing some, some time because the store isn't open yet. And as people know, once you pass that White Stone Bridge, I actually had two hours to kill. So I went to McDonald's, which is where I'm at right now. Old Country Road. That's right, Old Country Road. For the first time in my life, I didn't realize that they served egg and cheese biscuits without without the pork. So that's what I got. They actually made them okay. Saw a biscuit this time. Uh, all Hispanic uh, work staff, of course. Mexican types. I'm telling you, that's, that's all they're putting in these places now. So I got had two hours to kill. Now I'm down to one hour before these stores open. So let me explain before I get to this majority. I just got to explain this this other shit because it's fucking. <laughs> I don't want to say it's funny, but it's fucking interesting. Let's put it like that. And I'm doing what I'm doing because after you hear the story, you'll realize I didn't even get a chance to uh, do what I was trying to do. <laughs> So, <clears throat> I found a deal at Micro Center on a motherboard. What I did before this, oh yeah, and b- matter of fact, as I was coming here, I, I noticed on the Hutchinson Parkway in, in the Bronx, in particular, there were a whole bunch of accidents. And I think it's because, um, I mean, a whole bunch of accidents on both sides. 
I think it's because people, especially people from not from this country or this part of the country, they don't pay attention. I know it's fucking damn near April, but people say I always monitor the temperature. If nothing else, look on your damn phone. Look at the temperature that w- was going to be throughout the day and night. <clears throat> so you know how to prepare. So during certain hours, it was, uh, you know, got into the 20s. To me, it didn't feel like it. It was windy. And one time, you know, I went one spot. There was a tree uh, fucking down and shit. I almost ran into that shit because it was so dark. I didn't even see the shit, but. There was water because of rain. And then when it got into the 20s, see, common sense should tell you that it's going to freeze. Luckily, most of the roads were not black ice or nothing like that. It's just certain spots had puddles and Hutchinson River Parkway. People who drive that, you know, when it rains, there will be puddles near the uh, drains. And of course, when it dips down into to the... Uh, When it dips down into the 20s, it's going to freeze. If not, it may not freeze solid because a lot of the shit wasn't solid, but, you know, it still froze enough to cause these accidents that we we saw. I mean, tons of accidents up and down the spot. I was like, damn, must have been at least no lie around 10 NYPD cars at various locations. And that's just the accidents that they were at some look bad because i think there was like look like a three four five car uh pile up then others were parked because i guess they hit each other you know this is crazy but normally i drive on the left side because you got um you know people merging and people going at 95 so, you know, I, I just want them out of my way. But this time I got in the middle because I knew that the uh, little puddles would be slippery and icy. It should have been common sense for people, but, you know, some people are interested in going fast without thinking. But anyway, that, that's, a, that's a side story. And I didn't even check the, uh, the news to see what was up with that. But, um point is you know how it is once you cross the in the queens brooklyn queens you know there's a toll that has to be paid so i could have left came back but of course why would i do that and pay two tolls because then we're talking that's going to increase the price of the bargain that i got now i didn't examine the bargain yet to make sure it, it is in the condition that it needs to be in because it is open box a motherboard you know in case you don't know for like if you get an intel one you, you know you got to check the pins you know hold it a little bit tilt it and see if all the pins are aligned correctly that's the first order of business then check for blown caps oh, i see uh, nassau county got Police got new cars. I don't like these. But um, check for uh, blown caps, scrapes and scratches, and shit like that. This motherboard is normally around two fifty. I got it for one fifteen. It says it's complete, so I said fuck that. I looked up at all the other micro centers. Their open box for the same model. Is at least 200 bucks. Now. Because I bought. That that connects to the other part. I bought. My computer that I already had. I think it was like four or five years old. But it was ahead of the game. But since there's some new features that's out. I did the math. Did the calculations. I said you know what. The non-professional one can still work for what I need. 
clean the inside of these. Damn, I look like I got chips of glass or something. The windshield, but it <clears throat> looks like that'll work for what I need. Just in a different type of way. So let's, let me get uh, a new system. So I can update some things. Then I can sell the other one. And actually get more money, actually. But <laughs> that's how it's done. So. I got the new CPU. Intel, I was thinking AMD. <clears throat> but the only reason why I didn't go with AMD. Actually, it's two reasons. I mean, they review well. First of all, the ones that I really want that adequately replace what I had exactly. The investment I made on the other one just for the CPU and the motherboard cost me about, I was about to say about a thousand. No, it cost me because I forgot I paid a lot for that chip. I paid 900 and something for that chip. And I got it from a place. I ain't going to say the name of the place. Because I got to keep that one on the low. And the reason why I got to keep that one on the low. Is because they don't charge any taxes. That's why. <laughs> at least not. At least not outside of their state. So I got to keep that on the low. I got to keep that one top secret. Because <laughs> there's still a few places you can go online and order shit from. And they won't charge taxes. Not not too many. Now, I did find a place that sells car stereos. They don't charge taxes. So, and so I did get me. That was a few years ago. So, they're, they're cool with that. They got low prices and they don't charge taxes. That's the way shopping online used to be. Until the government intervened. Always want to charge taxes for shit. So, anyway. Got the CPU. Keep in mind, I still haven't checked it out to see if it works or, or and to see how it is. I was just curious to see how it compares to what I already had, which was a 12 core uh, professional joint. 24 threads, even though I kept the hyper threading off because I just felt that the performance was better without it, in my view. Now, with that being said, I got the CPU, I got a uh, air cooler. I don't trust the uh, liquid anymore after what happened before. Even though I liked it, I liked the performance, I liked the look. But once that shit fails, it's a fucking disaster. So anyway, I've been building computers for quite a while. Never fucked up, not one time. No matter how complex the shit was. <laughs> Which brings me to what happened. I bought a motherboard. I'm going to tell it. I, I bought a motherboard from Best Buy. Online, that is. Because they didn't have this one in stores. And they price matched. So, what I did is I got the motherboard. Finally, had to get CPU from a different spot. Motherboard from a different spot. Cooler from Best Buy. And the RAM from Newegg. So they all, the brand Newegg one took the longest. Got everything else quicker than expected. But then the RAM comes, uh, you know, they, I hate when they do that, uh, send the shit by FedEx or UPS only to have them drop it off to the post office. That wastes an, an extra fucking day. So... The shit finally came, so I couldn't even see how it was. Anyway. This is the new configuration. Normally, what I do is I use a drill to put the screws in to attach the motherboard to the case and the cooler. So I was looking at how this cooler is attached. I was like, it's, you know, it's a lot cheaper than the one I had before. And pricing and quality has got plastic fastener on it, which I thought was kind of, you know, odd. 
But I said, let me put this shit on, make sure this shit fits. Then I put the paste on the CPU and put the shit on. Then I, with the drill, then I heard that, that sound. Like, ah, oh, shit, the shit seized. That's that, that sound. So seized in two out of the four spots. I said, damn. So then I said, ah, oh, well, who cares? And then I remembered I didn't pull the, um, the tape off of the uh, <laughs> CPU cooler because I was really just trying to put it on to see if the shit fit and then I, I don't know what the fuck made me drill the shit. I, I guess it's because I said, oh, it, it fits, so let me just finish it off. So I didn't get a chance to peel the, uh, the, the tape off the cooler. Now, if I would have, then I would have left it as it was, but I would have had a tough time taking that shit off down the road. So I'm kind of glad I didn't. I'm kind of, I kind of wish the whole shit didn't happen to begin with, but I took the shit off. Well, I tried taking the tape off, seeing if I could slip it, but I couldn't. Then I tried to un, uh, use the drill, use the hand, everything. I couldn't get the shit off. I said, oh my God, ain't this some shit? I got the shit here, ready to do it. Just to at least evaluate the thing. And now I can't do it. So I'm doing everything I can. And trying not to scratch the motherboard, putting tiles over the pliers and screwdriver. I'm like, man, damn, I'm fucking up the uh, M.2 heat sink, scraping the paint. I'm like, oh, fuck. Never had this type of shit happen before. Fucking shit up. Must have taken me a couple of hours to get try and see how I could do this. Because, you know, I'm like, man, I got to do this without scratching the motherboard. So... You know how it is like when you work on a car. The longer shit is taken to uh, do what it's supposed to be doing, the more frustrated you become. And then after a while, you start breaking shit and, and trying to make it happen any way it can happen. So after a while, I started, I noticed I was scratching the motherboard. And then I, I saw a copper showing. I was like, oh boy. I said, now nah, I know I can't keep this shit now. I only had this shit at, not even a day. So, I was trying not to break the bracket, but I said, it looks like that's the only way that this shit is going to work. So, as I was breaking it, I was scratching the shit more with pliers, even though I had uh, the towels over the shit. I said, damn, it's fucked up. So, I finally got the shit off, because, you know, pliers, heavy-duty pliers always come in handy when you need to grip on something or break something. <laughs> So, broke that shit off. It was just plastic. And the thing that attached to the screw was like a little squarish type thing. Stuck in the plastic. And I guess that shit spun around. So, I couldn't, I could never get a grip on it. Had needle nose pliers. That shit didn't do shit. Didn't grip on nothing. That's why I always like the heavy duty joints. So... I took out the Dremel uh, drill, tried to saw the shit off. That shit, I, I was only grounding the outside. I was too afraid to, to go deeper because I was like, man, I, I think it's, it's cutting it too close to scraping up that motherboard, you know. And if I take it back to the store and they examine that shit, you know, it's going to be hard to explain. You know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> I said, fuck it. Then I remember, oh, I said, damn, I got another pair of pliers because I remember I bought a three plier set and I got one that's even more heavy duty. So I grabbed that one because with the, these uh, cooler things, you know, you got those screws, you got to they got a spring on them. So you got to press them in to get some uh, space on them. So I grabbed the heavy duty pliers and, and, and pressed the shit in and grabbed other pliers and, and twisted it. I said, man, damn, the shit just came off just like that. I said, damn. But I still had to break the plastic no matter what. So I said, man, this is some shit. So I tried my best to clean that shit up. And I forgot how to put the plastic uh, thing over the uh, CPU uh, pins. 
I had to even look that shit up on uh, YouTube. Cause I said, damn, man, man, how the fuck do you do that shit? I kept trying to put that shit on underneath it and shit. Started smashing pins. And after that, I'm like, oh, I'm definitely bringing this shit back now. <laughs> so, <clears throat> that was the plan. I said, fuck it. I'm going to just say, fuck it. I bought the shit. It came. The shit looks used. But before that, I did hook that shit up with my old CPU cooler. It didn't post, even though the memory came on with the colors. But I, I didn't get anything. But I didn't put my GPU on it. I just used the uh, GPU that was on it. So, I said, fuck it, it's going back. And I, I, I went, took it back to the store. Uh, to my surprise, not only did I not get any resistance... But the guy didn't even bother to, to look at the shit either. So I said, even better. Got my money. <laughs> Which brings me to the other part. That bracket that came with the CPU cooler, I had to break that shit up. So I didn't get a chance to use the CPU cooler. So I said, damn, how am I going to get another one? So I said, fuck it. I might as well bring this shit back. And say it was missing the piece. <laughs> In exchange. That's how you, fuck it man. That's how you got to do it. It's either that. You're going to be out of money. It's better that they're out of money than you. Shit. <laughs> they can take it. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. And. Um, I'm sure that won't be a problem. Because it's in exchange. So. You know, when you do it like that in an exchange, they're like, oh, yeah, I know he ain't up to no funny business. But. um, So that's what happened with that. So that's why I was looking on. Micro Center, because I wanted to test the CPU out now, because I'm like. Maybe there could have been too much pressure on the CPU with all that. Getting that fucking CPU cooler off, you know. Could have damaged that shit. So I got. I think you got seven or ten days to bring that back. And I don't know if I can bring it back or just exchange. So since that shit cost me five hundred, you know, you don't want to fuck around with that. That's why I said fuck that. I can't wait for no uh, uh, motherboard to come through UPS or nothing like that. I said I gotta get me one right now. If nothing else, to test that shit out. So, went to Mike, went on the Micro Center website, found one. There was one I was gonna get, an ASRock. It's going for one sixty, but it said incomplete. So I said, "Fuck it, it was missed." The, no, they said the Wi-Fi doesn't work. Even though I don't use the Wi-Fi on the motherboard, sometimes it's good as backup when something else goes wrong. But I said, "Fuck it." Wi-Fi ain't working. I don't even want it then. Even for 160. So then I found another ASRock one. Lower level one. For 135. So I booked that one. See. And that's also insurance too. Because if this one doesn't look right. On Long Island. And I pick up the one in Yonkers. You got to plan ahead. So. That's how that went. So then I was checking out the specs. When you pick out these motherboards, uh, so many are similar. You got to look at the power delivery. Some of them 60 amps, uh, 70 amps is like the minimum. And you got to go higher up. A lot of people don't look at the power delivery system. Then you got the 16 phase, 90 amps. If you even overclock a little, I advise you to... You got to start with that kind. Then you got the 20 phase, 105 amp, 24 phase, 105 amp. So anyway, I found another ASRock uh, Tai Chi light. And no, 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 that's not what happened. First, I found a gigabyte Aorus Master. That was 500 and something dollars. And I said, damn, because the motherboard I'm leaving behind with the system, I like the sound on it. Got the, the sound that just is fucking mind blowing. High quality audio file shit for the, for the to the fullest. 
So I said, damn, I can't let that shit go. I gotta find something equivalent. So what was equivalent was something that cost 500 And what I paid for my motherboard, if you remember, that was the one I got from Amazon, open box for 350 But they sent me a brand new one. But this time, I didn't feel like fucking with Amazon or any open box like that. Uh, that has to be sent to me. So I said, fuck this, let me go to Micro Center. So I did place that order for that Gigabyte Aorus Master for 500 And I assume it had at least what everything I had on it. So then I looked at that shit again. And I said, damn, this shit only got two S- uh, four SATA uh, ports. I said, man, damn. Need at least six. Then something else was missing. I said, man, this is 500 bucks. Glad I ordered that shit on, uh, from New Egg on the weekend. Then I said, let me look one more time. Let me look at As Rock again. Let me see this Tai Chi shit. So they got the Tai Chi light. I said, damn, I was sleeping on them. I said, this shit is 340 and it matches everything the Gigabyte has, plus more. You get USB 4. Thunderbolt, not that I ever use that shit. You get all the USBs. You get USBs that keep the uh, shit at the stable 5 volts. All speeds of USB, all every damn thing. Uh, the, the same, almost the same sound system. I said, fuck that. I'm getting that. But I had to wait until I get my money back before I uh, get it. So I canceled the Gigabyte one. And I'm going to order that As Rock one. But then, as I was doing that, like I said, I needed... I know this is Dragon, but like I said, I need me a motherboard right now to test this shit before that time is up. Because I don't want to cut that shit close. So, I looked at the Long Island store. Found me a nice MSI. I haven't had an MSI motherboard in quite some time. And I see that they, unlike the other brands, they ain't really up there, uh, keep up with the times too much. So, I found an MSI. I said, damn, this shit got everything on it for the price. You know, the, the sound isn't as great as what I was working with, but it's, you know, in the range. And uh, it has 90 amps, 16 phase power supply, uh, you know, VRMs. And everything else checked out. Uh, you know, I need a lot of USB ports too, because I got a lot of USB. You know, they, they these... Manufacturers start fucking around, taking off these USBs, taking off these SATA. People still got that shit. But I'm like, damn, this shit sound, sounds pretty good. This, this shit is normally 250 this motherboard. I said, that's an all-around good uh, deal, even at the full price. So the Micro Center had that shit open box for 115 and they said it was complete. Now, the good thing is... If the shit doesn't work, I don't have to come all the way back to Long Island for it. I can just take it back to Yonkers. So, about to check that out in a minute. Uh, half, 26 minutes went by while I'm making this video. So, even though I think on the thing it says 29. So, I got another half hour to go before they open. I'm glad I decided to do this to kill some time. Um... So we'll check that out. So I kept saying to myself, God damn it, if this shit is fully functional, I might just keep that shit. Because that shit looks like it's good enough to uh, get the job done. And if I don't keep it, it's still good enough to resell and make a uh, decent amount of money off of. Provided that it comes in the original box. Sometimes they put it in a white box, but usually they'll tell you online if it comes in a white box. But it's rare that it comes in a white box. They usually always come in the original box. 
So, we're going to see what's up with that. Because I'm, you know, I, I love bargain hunting. That's why I, I don't know what it is about Long Island. I don't know if it's because of the wealth, the distance. I don't know what it is, but the Long Island Micro Center, that's one to keep an eye out for. I'll just tell you that on open box shit because they always had something that the other ones don't have and either at a price that they can't deal with or just the product that just makes you say god damn I gotta go I gotta pay the toll you know what I mean <laughs> so I did that well I didn't do it yet I'm about to So let's get to this Majaro or Majara or whatever the fuck this bullshit is that Tariq Nashi keeps coming up with. Um, so I was listening to him, the video, what he had with the Mayo guy. And once again, uh, uh, and I know the haters are going to say, oh, man, this guy took a half hour talking about some shit that ain't on the main topic. So you learn something. You learn how to bargain shop. People like me, now it's coffee, by the way. Drink, just drink the last of it, too. But people like me, see, we don't pay full prices for shit. Even that CPU, I ain't pay no full price for that shit. That's, again, that's another reason why Micro Center comes in handy. Because they got CPU bargains that you, only they got the lowest prices on those shits. Now, you can get some shit off of eBay. And, you know, who knows if th those shits are stolen. I know I bought a, a brand new CPU off of a lady on eBay years ago at a can't miss price. You know, that shit was normally 600 I think she gave it to me for like 350 I said, man, she must have stole it, but I said, I don't give a damn. <laughs> but you can price match. That's the bottom line at the Micro Center CPU. But, of course, there'll be if there's no micro center within your area that you can get to with relative ease, they're probably going to say, nah, we ain't price matching. Or they'll probably tell you just go there. Unless you're buying something else. Anyway, Tariq Nasheed and this Majara bullshit. The one, the thumbnail he had with the guy with the mayo eating the mayo shit. Again, as I tell you, this guy waits for the so-called white supremacists. I, I noticed too, you know he's he's responding and listening to me because you know how I always say that he cannot call these people devils and crackers. Doesn't even call him white boy that much. Now he's starting to talk about they got a demonic spirit. But see, that's slick shit. You still can't can't call them devils and crackers because they're his bosses, his masters. That's why he keeps looking to deal with them. Common sense should tell you why would and again you can get an idea from looking at websites from like Stormfront. Why would they want to get on? Looking for them with like Tariq Nasheed. I am not even trying to make sure I find the guy. Just so I can uh, 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 confront him so to speak. I don't even know when his lives come on anymore. When I had a. Before Elon Musk bought that uh, Twitter man. I was getting his uh, notifications for his lives and shit. Or his uh, spaces. And he's being secretive with the shit now because he's focusing on these white supremacists. Every time black people call, they got to call up kissing his ass. And these are supposed to be people he's down with the Sir Majors, the Afro elites. The motherfucker don't even have, they, I don't know why they keep calling. I mean, the man don't even let them get 30 seconds in. All right, brother. Good. Got to let you go. Got to land everybody's plane that's black. But the so-called white supremacists, 
They can fly their plane on autopilot and keep it going. Refuel and keep going. They only get boot booted off when they decide to cut it. Tariq Nasheed hardly ever lands their plane. And notice how only one of them ever called him a, a nigger, straight up nigger, like he meant it. And that was that foreign guy. Then you got the other guy he's talking about. I seen your root work uh, shit. He's advertising that shit, by the way. He's not joking. And he said something about nigger. Notice how when they call him a nigger, he, like an Uncle Tom, laughs it off. Oh, that doesn't bother me. But he called you a nigger. How come you can't call him a cracker? Or a devil? That shows you how a nigger like him will react in person to one of these white supremacists. See, he'll tell you to stomp the asses of a white supremacist in real life, but he won't. He'll smack it to Harker Bay, but he won't smack a uh, white supremacist. Or what he wants to call... Hold on a second. Yeah, I hate these... Tiny ass water bottle caps where you can't take it off with one one hand and shit. Damn. So he'll um slap it to Harka Bay, but he'll cower in fear to a white man. Or be like any other Uncle Tom, he'll try to make excuses up as to why he shouldn't lay hands on him. So what what got me is this bullshit term I, I was trying to look it up Majara it's just like when he says he closes every show with Arusa Sessi and, and Tessa Sute <laughs> to everybody knowing why, see if the shit is real the language he's speaking why does the shit rhyme <laughs> that, that's your first clue that he's speaking some bullshit shit shouldn't be rhyming <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. That doesn't rhyme. But this is what he does. This Majara shit. He's telling the white guy who did sound like he probably was some type of Spanish because I on that Stormfront website only go on there with a VPN I, uh, or, or somebody else's computer or something. But uh but you'll have people from Latin America going up there talking about, I'm white. I am white. I don't like these other Lat these Latinos. I'm a white man. And then 10 to 1, you always find out that they clearly looked mixed. S starving and begging. The white man. I always say this. If you are white, and you don't want to be white. Then you don't need to make an announcement. It should be pretty apparent. See. People who are know that they're not all the way white. They got to make an announcement. And remind you. And tell you. Hey I'm white. If you were white. Without question. You don't have to tell anybody. Because we can see it. But. Just like on the Wikipedia pages about race, you'll see, and you read the, uh, what do they call it, the, uh, not the edit, but the, I think it's form, not form, but talk, the talk section. That's where you go to explain why you change something or why something should be changed. They're the, they're the ones who are always saying, yeah, we're white, we're white. They're white Hispanics, white Latinos, but you'll find out that most of them are hardly ever white. Like even that uh, group, uh, Three Dog Night. I guess I guess you can call the man the lead singer, Chuck Negron. He looks white. He's Puerto Rican. But when you look into it, See, this is the thing about these Hispanics. When you look into it, 
you'll see that he had one his, his one of his parents was Irish and the other parent was Puerto Rican. That's why he's looking white. <laughs> you take two Puerto Rican parents, then he won't be looking white. Just like a lot of Portuguese and these others, they'll be they got to be half white. Cameron Diaz or somebody like that got to be half white in order to have white attributes that you'll say, okay, that's a white person. You got to get two of the same kind, two Spaniards, two whatever. So it's easy to say that you're white if you're half white, but yet if somebody had black, half white, then and the other guy, he was trying to say that Patrick Mahomes was great because he was half white. But his father was the athlete, not his mother. But I'm guessing he was trying to say, well, his uh, brains came from his mother. But you see, for the people who like to say, don't try to make mulattoes black. Now you got a white, a so-called white man trying to make him white because uh, Patrick Mahomes is great. But anyway, Tariq Nashi was talking about this Majora shit. The, the, the word was soul. That, that was the fucking word. James Brown, the godfather of soul, not the godfather of Majora. So he's trying to introduce a word to us, just like the Ogun and all his other African talk. Because he, he, somebody, the white man, his boss is teaching him the art of brainwashing. See, people like me, we, we catch when he's selling it. Even the keyboard musician will always catch when he's selling something early. Pitching it early. Because I don't know if you people caught this shit. When he's trying to come with that microphone check, I don't know if you noticed that he started wearing old school Adidas track suits. I don't know if you caught that shit. He didn't say anything about it. He just said, yeah, my... He said one time, the shit is... This is fly. See, what he was doing was putting an image in your brain. Because in the 80s, the rapper used to wear the... Uh, the track suits or the what they call them sweat suits some wore Adidas others wore Fila because I think the Fila uh, cost more money and were fancy um, so that's why he, he was wearing that shit warming your brain up for this microphone check shit putting your mind into that spirit of the 80s Um, that's what he always does and this Majaro shit who knows what that shit is all about except to say that he's probably got some more marketing shit that he's trying to push on that shit just like this root work deodorant he always says it's a big seller he always says oh man it's in high demand everybody can't they, they, they can't get enough of it I'll tell you what, if it was that goddamn high demand right now, I'd be in stores right now. But everything he comes up with, he always says, oh, it's a great success. It's uh, this and that. Because you don't want to be marketing says that you can't have doubt about your product. Because then other people have doubt about your product. So you can't say, "My oh yeah, my shit is all right, man. It's all right. You got to oversell the shit. But it's pretty obvious when you're overselling it. Because the shit is not available everywhere. Who the fuck is going to walk around with some blueberry deodorant? The fuck you look like going around smelling like blueberries? <laughs> I mean, the fuck, man? Are you a fucking 10-year-old? A 10-year-old might want to wear some blueberry deodorant. But not a motherfucking adult. Come on. So... <laughs> You know that root work is bullshit. And you see the commercial the little ad he has. He has a, a big butt black woman with an African type look. And I'm still going strong. It's still 20 minutes until. She got an African type look about her. Like it's some type of voodoo uh, uh, type shit. Root work. Putting a root uh, uh, whammy on you. So he's all in with this African shit. He keeps on tricking shit. That's why when that guy kept on asking him, what did you contribute? And how are you? Uh, 
were here first to build shit, he can't explain this shit because he's bullshit. You can't keep saying black people are already over here, but Africans mixed in with them and then emphasize African more than the people who are black people who are already here. How does that work? The Africans would be the guests. And your so-called foundational black American would be the ones who are already over here. So why would you be trying to uh, prefer the African? He can't explain it. He, he, he can't explain who they were. He offered a little more information. Oh, look at the mounds here and, and descriptions of uh, uh, the, the people who were buried and all that kind of stuff. Because he's hearing other people talk about these things. And he's taking bits and pieces and saying, okay, yeah, that's a good talking point to come up with when uh, somebody wants to go too far <clears throat> with me and explaining this shit. So now I can uh, come up with some good bullshit. But see, when they go deeper, that's why when the guy was trying to go deeper or anybody tries to go deeper with him, he starts to mute and over talk them. Tell them, oh, we're not going there. We're not going there. We're not going to do this. Because he doesn't have the answers. Anybody who's had any ghetto arguments and stuff like that, you already know how the tactics work. And if you don't, you should. So, he kept talking this Majaro shit. We, the, the word was soul. I don't know, I still don't know who came up with that one. But, that's the word. Soul singer, not no Majaro singer. And let me find out that's an African word. Maybe somebody can help me out. Like I said, I only remember Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask. <laughs> it's the only Majora I'm familiar with. You know what? And I still never played that game because I never had a Nintendo. So, well, since the, what? Only Nintendo I played. No, my nephew had a Nintendo 64. He played the Golden Eye on that shit. Which is really the only great game on that system. I didn't have a Nintendo because I, I didn't want one. So anyway. I hate that I'm missing out on a lot of Nintendo games. But you know they need to come up with some mature shit now. You know some real shit. Study these baby games. Anyway that's, that's a side note. But um. What he does. Oh, Popeye's about to be open. 10 o'clock? God damn. What the fuck wants chicken at, fried chicken at 10 o'clock in the morning? 11 o'clock in the morning. Anyway. <laughs> Some shit I just can't eat in the morning. Like I can see you coming from a long overnight drive or some shit like that. And then you're like, fuck it. Let me take some fried chicken. Fuck it. But anyway. What he's doing. It's brainwashing again. Keep in mind, he's always selling you every something every time he opens his mouth. He's begging or selling. And he's prepping you for the next sales opportunity. His audience for his goods are underground and online. That's why he's been working at for over 20 years. Because... He doesn't have to pay. It's like when the Nation of Islam. I don't. I haven't had cable in a while now. So I don't know if it's still going on. But their network. If you want to call it that. Since they're all over the country. What they were able to do. To show their, their speeches. And Farrakhan speeches and shit all over the country. Was to have their members. Put the shit on public access. And try to get the same time slot. And day. All over the country. So you have a free. Network. To push your. Uh, your agenda is at. And of course. Tariq Nashi couldn't do that. Because he's not all over the country. But the nation of Islam they are. So he had to go online. And do it that way. 
And of course, he has had success with it. That's why he keeps it going. Because he has to. That's his income. And if you notice in the last few lives that he released or clips of the lives that he released. I always laugh when I hear his woman <laughs> uh, smashing dishes around. Bang, bang, bang. I'm like, damn, they brag about all the shit they got. They can afford a housekeeper. Are they always finishing up eating <laughs> when he goes online? And when he says, oh, my wife is making this, these noises. She's heavy handed. Come on, you can hear in the background. She knows, you you know that she hears, knows what's going on. And she's doing it on purpose because she's tired of this motherfucker always being online more than he is fucking her. That's why. That's why he keeps her pregnant so she can shut the fuck up. I mean, come on. Because she's younger than him. If he didn't stick her, leave her with all those babies, she would have left him for somebody else. That's why he keeps her pregnant so she'll stick around. She'll be forced to stay. Because no woman with four kids <laughs> is trying to find another guy. So you can just hear when those pots and pans keep clanking. And once he mentions it, if you notice, he increases the uh, calamity. <laughs> it's annoying to me because listen as, as you're listening, but it's also funny because I know damn well she's doing it on purpose. And I know he has to know that she's doing that shit on purpose. Because goddamn, how long does it take to wash the dishes? I, I, I mean, it's taking her hours to wash the dishes. Shit. Can't take that long. Let me see. You got her, Tariq, three sons, a mother-in-law, possibly another mother-in-law, possibly Tariq's other daughter. So I guess what? That's two, uh, that's about seven people. Even... The way, if you listen to this stuff in the background, even that, she should be able to get that shit done quickly because of the way she's moving that shit in the background. But she does that on purpose because she's fed up with this guy. But she knows she has to tolerate it because I'm he, I'm sure he's telling her, listen, baby, you like this house? You like these, these cars? You like these uh, trips out to fucking Fiji? Easter Island? All these places? This is how it's done. So you need to be cool. How else is it going to get done? Making these bullshit documentaries, that ain't getting it done. Speaking of that, if this computer, <laughs> I never had such issues with the build in my life. But if this shit does indeed prove to be better than what I had, and I'll be shocked if it is because what I had was so fucking great. But if it does prove to be that great, then God damn it, I'm going to start making me some documentaries. They're going to be some unapproved, of, of course. I'm going to start putting some shit together. And it ain't going to be on YouTube because you know how they do. But, um, you can tell his wife is fed up with that shit. So, if this shit goes on on Sunday, that means the computer is working out fine. If this shit comes up, if you see hear this shit on Wednesday or some shit like that, Thursday, then, uh, you know, the motherboard didn't work. <laughs> or I had to wait to get the other one. Oh, yeah, let me teach you another trick, too. See, that's the other thing when I talk about this other shit, you can learn something, too. You know how if you get new hardware on your computer, the Windows will say, you can't activate this on here, right? So normally what somebody would do, if they're in the mood to do that, they just delete the whole shit, reinstall the Windows. But if you got shit set up like I had shit set up, because I want to I want to keep everything I had, the games and the software and shit, so I just removed all the drivers and software related to the motherboard. So that way when I get the new shit, I can 
directly compare the performance by what I had already. And that way I know for sure what I'm working with. So what you do, here's, here's, here's the easy way to do this. Instead of fucking around with windows and calling them and shit to reactivate shit. Cause they'll, you know, they'll tell you, even if you just update the motherboard, they say, you can't do that. You got a new computer. The simple way to do this is to deactivate windows. Just look that shit up on, you can look that shit up on YouTube or any website. Just put it in the search engine, deactivate windows 10. You deactivate the shit. Now that the uh, uh, software key is no longer associated with your computer. So now when you put the new hardware together and turn the shit on, now you activate it again. Now it's associated with that shit for, like it's for the first time. But it's yours now. That's all you have to do. That way you don't have to uninstall shit and reinstall shit. That's just a tip. So anyway, what Tariq Nashi does is with the Majaro shit. The reason why he keeps talking is Majaro or Majaro, whatever, however it's pronounced. The root work, the Ogun. He keeps trying to relate shit back to Africa, number one, or pseudo Africa. You notice how he's not trying to relate nothing to Native America. If you noticed. And what it is, it's a play on. See, his masters. Yeah, his windows are fogging up. I gotta do something about that. His masters have made you believe. Because you notice what they, these coon agents always say. Black people are very spiritual people. We, we, we Muslim harder than the Muslim. We Christian harder than the uh, Christians. They always say that. But yeah, we don't make up the majority of these religions, but that's what they say. Now, what he's doing with this Banjara shit, he's trying to put a bullshit pseudo explanation for soul he's telling people that Majaro Majaro is what soul is that's the proven thing that's what we have the Majaro spirit see once you say spirit alone you already know that you're dealing with some bullshit <laughs> that alone once you go there that's bullshit a lot of people don't catch that shit People keep asking him to prove this shit. Once he proves, you ask him to prove that shit, he, he never will. There is, he's trying to connect the religious aspect or the so-called spiritual connection with black people because once you start feeling good with the Holy Spirit of some kind, then you start feeling good enough to give up the goddamn money to him. That's why. That's why. That's what he's trying to tap in. He tries to tap in to any and everything to make black people give out their money. Uh, white supremacy. The ancestors. Majaro. Africa. FBA. Native America. Hip hop. Caribbean. Anything to keep you giving up your money. That's the other thing, too, with this ancestor shit. You hear uh, Pan-Africans talk about the ancestors a lot. And then when you ask them about this ancestor shit, they want to get mad. Or they just insist that the ancestors are talking to you. Let me tell you this. The ancestors are not talking to you. I hate when people bring that shit up as if that's some actual factual shit. This is not Return of the Jedi, people. You don't have Ben Kenobi and Yoda coming back 
talking to you and guiding you on what to do. Speaking of that, I should watch me some Star Wars. Real Star Wars today. I know by the time I get home, I might fall the fuck asleep. Um, on that TV I got, though, that shit is so fucking great. I'm telling you, it makes Star Wars look old. It looks its age now. It's crazy. But it looks its age now. With that TV. If Hisense ever made a fucking computer monitor with that technology, goddammit, I'm buying one. But anyway, the ancestors don't communicate with you. That is not pseudo. That is some bullshit. That's, that's what the fuck that is. It is like some tribal shit. Which is why, which, which lets you know that he still believes that we're African. Or else why would you talk about these ancestors? The ancestors have uh, given me the spirit, given me the word, all that kind of bullshit. The ancestors haven't given you nothing. And if they did, the ancestors are the ones that's responsible for your fucking condition. So how great were they? Come on, we gotta stop this bullshit. What time is it? Damn, it's getting there. So we got we to stop this bullshit. Ancestors. Ancestors don't talk to you. Dead people don't talk to you. The people are dead. If they can communicate with you. You can write history books on the shit. But they keep people like Tariq Nasheed hustlers. Keep talking this ancestor shit because they're trying to tap into your non-religious, spooky spirituality. In other words, those spiritual people are people who don't believe in religion. Don't really believe in God, but they don't want to say. But say that they believe in something beyond being a human being to appease other people who do believe in some other shit. That's all spirituality is. So in other words, it's peer pressure. That's, that's what the fuck it is. It's peer pressure. And then there are some people who truly believe in a higher power or a God. But what you can't do is you can't. Nobody can explain it. Anybody who attempts to explain a God. They're bullshitting before they even complete their fucking thought. You should know that. But then again, when you got the Jim Jones uh, of the world and all these other cults and shit. <sighs> they keep doing it because people keep falling for the shit. But like I said, it's always the mentally ill ones first. Anyway, this Majora shit is a bunch of bullshit. This ancestor shit is a bunch of bullshit. These white, fake white supremacists that keep coming on to wreak Nashi's ex lives, that's a bunch of bullshit. Why are they going out of their way to find this guy? They're not going out of their way to find Farrakhan. Or any nation in the Islam guy. And they can find them. They're not going out of their way to find Al Sharpton. Or Jesse Jackson. <clears throat> or whoever the fuck. Or Crump. Not that he's a leader or nothing. But you know. He's somebody that's known. So. Why do they try to find Tariq Nasheed? They don't try to find him. They are sent to him by his masters. I mean, it should be pretty apparent when you hear the communications between the two of them and any of the given white supremacists, so-called white supremacists. He's always respecting them, calls them sir. Has a conversation. He jokes with them. They call him a nigger. He, he giggles. That's a true Uncle Tom for you. Giggling when a white man calls you a nigger. Hey, boy, 
when is your documentary coming out, boy? <laughs> well, yes, sir. Yeah, it's, it's almost complete, sir. Even the Uncle Tom Nation of Islam won't have a white man calling them boy or nigger. But that just goes to show you what Tariq Nasheed is all about. So now it has finally reached 10 o'clock. So I got to go do what I said I was going to do in the beginning of this video. Because obviously, you know, I just got the parts. Didn't even get a chance to use them. And yes, I did fuck them up. Like I said, I, I'm responsible for fucking them up. But I'm going to be responsible for uh, making exchange too. So, <laughs> so that's how that shit is going to work. Fuck, I look like spending damn near $1,000 and shit and breaking shit. And then eating the money. And don't even have a chance to see what the fuck this shit was all about. You know I got to be crazy to do that shit. So, now let's see if I can see. With that being said, let me see something. Okay. Let me just see. All right, the pickup is ready at Micro Center. Cool. They just opened. They got that shit done with the quickness. Uh, I'm going to Best Buy first because, uh, Give them a little time. Then again, there ain't no time needed. But <laughs> so with that, I'm out. Like I said, if you see this on Sunday or Monday, that means the computer is good. Any other day, that means something went wrong. So with that, I'm out.